Hello and welcome to Microbiology Shorts. These are short videos on microbiology topics. My name is Rebecca Payne and today I'm talking about immunity, specifically the human immune system, and how it goes about attacking bacteria and viruses. This slide shows two different sections of the human immune system. And one we call humoral immunity, and the other we call cellular immunity. So let's talk about the left-hand side of this picture first. Humoral immunity involves how the immune system attacks microbes that are outside of human cells. So, for example, they may be floating around in the lymph, which is the fluid that surrounds all human cells and bathes our human cells. They may be in the lymph nodes. They may be in the bloodstream but they are not inside of a cell. Most bacteria don't live inside of cells. Most bacteria, when they get taken up inside of a cell, they're then killed. Some of them, however, have the ability to live inside cells, and of course viruses have to live inside cells. So we're just talking about bacteria that prefer to float around outside of cells. What happens when the human immune system detects a foreign protein, and bacteria have foreign proteins all over the surface of their cells. The cell wall contains all sorts of proteins and glycoproteins, and these stick out, and when they stick out, they can be detected by what we call B cells or B lymphocytes, as it's described in this particular photo. B lymphocytes carry little tiny proteins on their surface that are called antibodies antibodies have, they look like a Y, so it's a little Y-shaped, capital Y-shaped um, molecule there you see in blue and in red on the surface of the B lymphocytes. Sometimes these antibodies are attached to the surface of the cell, and sometimes these antibodies are free and floating around inside of the lymph fluid or the blood or wherever they may be outside of a cell. The purpose of an antibody, which is made by B cells, that's the, the job of the B cells, purpose of the antibody is to attach to foreign proteins inside of the human body. Now, we're talking about bacteria, but this of course could be any other kind of foreign protein too. Antibodies can attach to foreign proteins from, let's say, foreign cells. Say you got the wrong kind of blood transfusion. Um, antibodies can attach to the surface of those blood cells and then they would cause them to be killed. But for our purposes, we're going to think of antibodies as, as binding to bacteria. And you can see in the picture in the center of this photograph right here that these antibodies are attaching to the cocci and the rod-shaped bacteria in the, in the picture. They attach with the top of the Y, not the bottom of the Y. The top of the Y is what we call the variable region of the antibody. The bottom of the Y is what we call the constant region of the antibody. The constant region of the antibody, or the FC portion of the antibody, Sometimes it's called the FC portion too. FC portion is designed to be to, to attach to human cells. So you see the FC portion attaches to the B cell, and at the bottom of the screen, the FC portion attaches to the macrophage that's listed there. Um, the top of the Y portion attaches to the bacteria. This is called the variable region, and there are millions of different possible variable regions, which makes it possible for the human immune system to identify millions of different possible foreign proteins. Now you may be wondering, why does the human body attack just bacteria versus attacking itself? Because, of course, the human cells, human cells of all types, have proteins on the surface of them. Um, early on in development, humans go through a, an elimination process where any B cells that contain an antibody that would bind to a human cell are eliminated. This process is called clonal selection, which you don't really have to know for my class, but you may want to know for just uh, knowledge's sake. So the, the B lymphocytes that are left, the B cells that are left, only are going to attack foreign proteins. So after the antibodies bind to the, the bacteria, uh, the process of binding to the bacteria is actually called opsonization. Uh, once the bacteria are opsonized, they're coated with the antibodies, then they can be dis destroyed in a number of different ways. And at the bottom it says by neutralization, by lysis um, due to complement, and by phagocytosis. And the one I'm curious and interested about for this particular, because it's listed in the picture, is phagocytosis, pardon me. 
So there's a phagocytic cell, polymorphonuclear leukocyte or a macrophage, and the FC constant region of the antibody binds to the outside surface of that macrophage. And then during a process of endocytosis, whether that's just general endocytosis or receptor-mediated endocytosis, the bacteria are then drawn inside of the macrophage. Those vesicles are then going to merge with lysosomes containing digestive enzymes. The bacteria will be digested and thus eliminated. So that's humoral immunity. On the right-hand side of this picture is cellular immunity, and cellular immunity is important for intracellular microbes, which include all classes of viruses and some bacteria. For example, we know that uh, many uh, species in the genus Ooh, mycobacterium, pardon me, like to live inside of cells. So when a cell is invaded and infected by a microbe, it has some of the foreign protein, um, goes through a process of what's called um, antigen presenting. And what happens then is a little tiny piece of that virus or that bacteria winds up on the surface of the cell. So again, this is a surface protein recognition um, pattern here. So that, that infected protein actually becomes different on the surface. And the differences can be detected by a type of T cell called helper T cell. Helper T cells have surface receptors, which are just proteins, and they're pictured here in this reddish kind of color. They can attach to the cell that has been infected, and they can recognize that the protein on the surface of that cell is not our self protein, not a human protein, but it is a foreign protein. They get all hot and bothered about that as they should, and then they produce little tiny molecules called cytokines, and cytokines go out, they flow out in the blood or the lymph or the, the, the um, uh, fluid surrounding cells, and they tell other cells, hey, we've got a problem here, we need your help, come on over and help me get rid of this particular infected cell. So the cytokines go to cytotoxic T cells, they may go to natural killer cells, they may go to macrophages, they may go to other organisms. All these white blood cells then follow the scent trail of the cytokines. Um, and when the cytokines are strongest, that's where the, the infected cell or cells is. And then they proceed to destroy that particular cell, and that cell undergoes lysis or another process called apoptosis. And then that cell's gone and hopefully cleaned up and all of the remaining viruses that might get um, distributed from lysis of the cell get, get destroyed as well by other methods. Okay, so this is part of the how the immune system works, an important two parts of the immune system. Um, both of these are part of our specific immune system, so these are not, these are not random acts of cleaning up things that, that are done by our uh, our nonspecific immune system. These are very specific ways that this, the immune system goes after certain bacteria, certain viruses, and gets rid of them all. All right, well, that's the end of this particular micro short. I hope you have enjoyed this topic. Come back again and see another one. Have a great day.